In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the pruning effect from Loki in DaVinci Resolve. So to start, here in Fusion, I'm going to drag down a background node and connect that to the media out. I'm just going to bring down the alpha all the way. So this is just to set the resolution of the composition. So now anything we add will be 1920 by 1080. So now I can open my media pool and just bring down the DaVinci Resolve logo. Merge that over. So we want the shape to kind of start burning away. So to cut that out, I can bring down an ellipse mask. So in order to keep it a circle, I want the width and the height to be the same. So to link those, I can hit equals in the width value, and that'll make this expression box here. So I can drag out from this little uh, plus sign right here and connect that to the height. Now the values for the width and the height are linked. So I'll go to the frame where I want to start and bring the height down to zero. Let's hit a keyframe. Then I'll go towards the end of the composition and just bring it up till it fills the screen. Now it's growing throughout the shot. I can also play around with the center controls to choose where I want it to start from. If I hit 2 with the ellipse selected, we can see that mask. So right now it's very clean and crisp and we want it to look more organic. So I can hit shift space and search for a displace tool. Now by default, that's going to try to bring that into the blue mask input. I can just drag that out and connect this to the yellow arrow here. So then I can bring down a fast noise and drag that into the displace. Now in the displace, I can change the type to X and Y, bring down the X offset and the Y offset, and just bring up the X and Y refraction a little bit. Then in the fast noise, I can bring up the detail and the scale, and I can play around with the contrast a little bit. Now it looks more organic, like it's kind of growing over it. Now let's use this to cut out our subject. So after the merge, I'm gonna add a brightness contrast. Then in the settings, I'll check multiply by mask and apply mask inverted. Now I can plug the displace into that. Now it's being cut out by that shape we made. Now let's make the burning edge effect. So I'm gonna copy these notes here, and then instead of pasting it, I'm gonna hit Control Shift V, and that made an instance of them. Now an instance is like a copy, but if I change the setting in one, it'll change that in the other one. Now the benefit to using an instance is that we can choose which settings we want to be the same. So in our ellipse, I'll right click on the border width and hit D instance. Now we can change the border width on this one, but it won't affect our other one. And I can do the same with this solid checkbox. So I'm going to uncheck solid and then bring up the border width until we have this kind of outline. Now I only want this to be inside the shape of our logo, so I can add another brightness contrast. And again, go under settings, hit multiply by mask, and I can just drag our logo into that. So now it's only happening inside the shape of the logo. So to give it its color, I can bring down a background node, plug that into that, and I'm gonna set the color to a kind of orange, merge this over the brightness contrast, and set that to screen. Now I wanna add a glow, and there are two ways you can do this. You could add a soft glow, bring down the glow size a little bit, then copy and paste that, bring up the glow size a little more, then paste that again, and bring the glow size even more. You could do that, or you can do what I like to do and download the free plugin Xglow off of Reactor and use that. So I'm just gonna search that, Xglow. Right off the bat, it's a really realistic looking glow. I'm just gonna bring it to a nice kind of orange color and boom, that looks great. Now the pruning effect in the show leaves a kind of smoky trail, so let's work on that. So I'm gonna go to the first frame and then making sure nothing is selected, I'm gonna add a trails node. I'm going to plug the brightness contrast into that and bring that to the screen. I'm going to change a few settings in here. I'm going to set the gain to 0.9 and I'm going to set the blur size to 3. Now if I hit play, you can see it's kind of slowly fading away with this kind of smoky look, which is just what we're looking for. Now it is worth noting that with the trails note, you have to hit restart every time you make a change to it. Now I'm going to bring down a fast noise, bring up the detail and the scale a little bit. Then in the color, I can take this color too and bring that to a blue color. Then I can copy and paste this fast noise here. In the merge, I'm going to set the apply mode to screen. Now in this one, I can bring up the seethe ever so slightly. And then the color, I'm going to change it to a kind of purple color. And then in both of the fast noises, I can bring up the seethe rate. Then I'm going to add a brightness contrast, multiply by mask, then plug the trails into that. Then I will merge that over our logo and I will plug the output of our shape into the merge so it's only happening where our thing is being cut out. Now let's add the sparks. So I'm going to bring down a P emitter and a P render, bring that to the screen. I'm going to change the output mode in the P render to 2D 
Then in the P emitter, I can change the region to bitmap. Then I'll drag out from that background that's used in our outline and plug that into the P emitter. Now it's emitting particles from that outline. In the controls, I'm gonna bring up the number to 100. Then in the velocity, I'm gonna bring the velocity to 0.05 and the velocity variance to 0.1. Then in the angle variance, I'm gonna change that to 360 and do the same with the angle Z variance. Now they're shooting out. So to make them go down, I'm gonna add a P directional force. That'll automatically add a kind of gravity to it. Now the particles are really hard to see. So I'm gonna go into the style tab, change the style to bitmap. Now we're gonna make what the particle's gonna look like. So I'm gonna bring down a background, set the color to white, then the image tab, I'm gonna uncheck auto resolution and set that to 100 by 100. Bring that to the screen. I'm gonna hit control F to make that fit the screen. So I'm gonna add a rectangle to that, squeeze it down and make it very long and thin. Then I'm gonna add another rectangle to that, set the paint mode to subtract and just hit invert and then soft edge that a lot. And we can plug this into the P emitter, bring that to the screen. Under the size controls, I'm gonna bring the size to 0.2 then bring the size to velocity to 0.1. Now they're all facing the same way. So in the controls tab, under the rotation, I'm gonna change the rotation mode to rotation relative to motion. Now the particles are gonna be rotated towards whichever way they're facing. Now while we're here, I'm gonna bring the lifespan down something like maybe 20 and bring the lifespan variance up a bunch and do the same with the number variance. I feel like there's a Loki joke to be made here with all the variants we're adding to this. Finally, I'll go to the style tab under the fade controls and just bring in the out point all the way. Now to get them to look like hot fiery particles, I'm gonna add another X glow. And again, I'm gonna bring that to a nice orange color and I will merge that over everything else that we have and set that apply mode to screen. Now I did this on a logo, but the technique is exactly the same if you wanna use it on text or footage. Just make sure you film your subject on a green screen or cut them out with something like the magic mask. If you would like to see more effects from Loki, let me know in the comments. But for now, I'll leave you with this video where I show you how to make the Ghost Rider effect.